The fact that the United States ever even built the B-57 is in itself a bit of a strange occurrence, mainly because it was actually a British airplane. The United States had a long-standing tradition of not using foreign-built aircraft for our military, but when the Korean War heated up in 1950, we really needed a tactical bomber that could fly in any weather. We had deployed the piston-powered Douglas B-26 to Korea, but it became pretty clear that they had no business being there when they suffered high rates of losses and at the numbers they were being shot down, the entire inventory of the plane was going to be gone in less than three years. So the Air Force issued a formal request in September of 1950 for a jet-powered bomber. They wanted a plane that had a top speed of 630 miles per hour, a ceiling of 40,000 feet, and a range of 1,150 miles. It had to be an all-weather design and needed to include a reconnaissance version as well. A few aircraft were presented, such as the Martin XB-51, the North American B-45 Tornado. So the Air Force decided to have a competition to pit the different aircraft against one another to determine the top performer. The British Canberra actually performed the first non-stop jet flight across the Atlantic Ocean just in order to get stateside to compete in this competition. So clearly it meant business. The test took place at Andrews Air Force Base in Maryland, and the Canberra significantly outperformed the other planes, finishing its drills with over four minutes to spare. Actually, the test pilot decided to take off again, fly up to 1,000 feet above the crowd, perform a tight 360-degree turn, a spiral dive before landing again with over a minute still left on the clock. It wasn't even a contest. The Canberra was clearly the more superior aircraft and was selected by the search committee. So in March of 1951, the Air Force contracted with Glenn Martin Aircraft Company to build a licensed copy of the Canberra bomber. The first Martin-built B-57 flew on July 20, 1953. One month later, the initial production run of eight aircraft had been accepted by the U.S. Air Force, but at that point, the Korean War had basically been ended with a ceasefire. The remaining order of 67 aircraft were deemed no longer necessary as bombers and were converted on the assembly line to serve as medium altitude reconnaissance aircraft while still retaining all the basic Canberra features. The basic design was further refined as production went on and in limited quantities the changes were made such as a fighter style canopy and tandem seating arrangements. External bomb mounting points were added to the wings along with six 50 caliber Browning machine guns to allow the bomber to strafe ground targets. Later these were upgraded to 20 mm cannons. There was some grumbling about the cost of the aircraft and their redesign, but overall the Air Force saw the B-57 as a solid reconnaissance aircraft and test platform by the final production in 1957. Over 400 of them have been built in all of its variants. The operational history of the B-57 began with it mainly being used as a reconnaissance plane over China and Europe. Two of them were shot down over China, one by a MiG-17 in 1958, and another by the first ever successful use of a surface-to-air missile in 1959. During the early years of the Vietnam War, two B-57s were used in top-secret Patricia Lin project in early of 1963. The U.S. Air Force needed to expand their reconnaissance program in South Vietnam, especially at night. So they modified two B-57s to house a KA-1 36-inch forward oblique camera and a low panoramic KA-56 camera that was used in the U-2. Inside of the modified bomb bay, they had various other high-resolution cameras and an infrared scanner. These planes were used to fly nighttime missions to identify Viet Cong bases, small arms factories, storage, and training areas. As the Vietnam War intensified, the 8th and 13th bomb squadrons based out of Benoit Air Base had B-57s ready to fill their original role as a tactical bomber. The aircraft usually carried 9 500-pound bombs in its bay and 4 750-pound bombs on its wings. They were used primarily as a strafing aircraft and as a dive bomber. They were capable of 4-hour long missions and with that loadout became an excellent ground support aircraft. Of the 94 total B-57s deployed to Vietnam, 26 of them were lost to ground fire, 5 were lost to mortar fire and ground attacks, 4 were lost to mid-air collisions, 10 were lost to an airfield accidental bomb explosion, 7 were lost to operational causes, and 6 were lost to unknown causes. Only 9 B-57s were still flying by 1969. NASA actually had a few B-57s and used them as high-altitude atmospheric research platforms. 
The same few aircraft even were used in Afghanistan as communications platforms that fly high over an area linking various communication devices on the battlefield. In 2011, it was determined that a third aircraft was needed to satisfy mission requirements and an additional B-57 was returned to flight status in August of 2013. In 2017, NASA used its specialized B-57s to photograph the solar eclipse on August the 21st. Alright, so I re-uploaded this video with better audio just because my old one I like stuttered so much and I had a lot of ohms. So I kept getting complaints about the audio so I decided to redo it. I hope it's a little bit better. Um, I'm still recording most of this on my phone. I'm going to get a USB mic soon. so. Hopefully all my newer videos will be just way better audio quality. So thanks for sticking in there, guys. I appreciate all your support. Like, comment, subscribe. Keep an eye out for new videos.